Not to be confused with Ernst Meyer, computer scientist, Ernst Mayer, Ernst Meyer, Ernest Mayer or Ernest May, Ernst Walter Meyer, the 5th of July 1904 to the 3rd of February 2005, was one of the 20th century's leading evolutionary biologists. He was also a renowned taxonomist, tropical explorer, ornithologist, philosopher of biology, and historian of science. His work contributed to the conceptual revolution that led to the modern evolutionary synthesis of Mendelian genetics, systematics, and Darwinian evolution, and to the development of the biological species concept. Although Charles Darwin and others posited that multiple species could evolve from a single common ancestor, the mechanism by which this occurred was not understood, creating the species problem. Ernst Meyer approached the problem with a new definition for species. In his book Systematics and the Origin of Species 1942, he wrote that a species is not just a group of morphologically similar individuals, but a group that can breed only among themselves, excluding all others. When populations within a species become isolated by geography, feeding strategy, mate choice, or other means, they may start to differ from other populations through genetic drift and natural selection, and over time may evolve into new species. The most significant and rapid genetic reorganization occurs in extremely small populations that have been isolated as on islands. His theory of peripatric speciation, a more precise form of allopatric speciation which he advanced based on his work on birds, is still considered a leading mode of speciation and was the theoretical underpinning for the theory of punctuated equilibrium proposed by Niles Eldridge and Stephen Jay Gould. Meyer is sometimes credited with inventing modern philosophy of biology, particularly the part related to evolutionary biology, which he distinguished from physics due to its introduction of natural history into science. Topic: <inaudible> Biography. <inaudible> 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 Meyer was the second son of Helena Pusinelli and Dr. Otto Meyer. His father was a jurist, district prosecuting attorney at Würzburg but took an interest in natural history and took the children out on field trips. He learned all the local birds in Würzburg from his elder brother Otto. He also had access to a natural history magazine for amateurs, Cosmos. His father died just before he was 13. The family then moved to Dresden and he studied at the Staatsgymnasium, Royal Gymnasium, until 1918 in Dresden Neustadt and completed his high school education there. In April 1922, while still in high school, he joined the newly founded Saxony Ornithologists Association. Here he met Rudolf Zimmermann, who became his ornithological mentor. In February 1923, Meyer passed his high school examination Abiter, and his mother rewarded him with a pair of binoculars. On 23 March 1923 on the lakes of Moritzburg, the Frauenteich, he spotted what he identified as a red-crested pochard. The species had not been seen in Saxony since 1845 and the local club argued about the identity. Raymond Schelcher of the club then suggested that Meyer visit his classmate Erwin Striesmann on his way to Greifswald, where Meyer was to begin his medical studies. After a tough interrogation, Striesmann accepted and published the sighting as authentic. Striesman was very impressed and suggested that, between semesters, Meyer could work as a volunteer in the ornithological section of the museum. Meyer wrote about this event, it was as if someone had given me the key to heaven. Quote, he entered the University of Greifswald in 1923 and, according to Meyer himself, took the medical curriculum to satisfy a family tradition but after only a year, he decided to leave medicine and enrolled at the Faculty of Biological Sciences. Meyer was endlessly interested in ornithology and chose Greifswald at the Baltic for my studies for no other reason than that. It was situated in the ornithologically most interesting area. Quote, Although he ostensibly planned to become a physician, he was first and foremost an ornithologist. Quote, During the first semester break Striesman gave him a test to identify tree creepers and Meyer was able to identify most of the specimens correctly. Striesman declared that Meyer was a born systematist. In 1925, Striesman suggested that he give up his medical studies, in fact he should leave the Faculty of Medicine and enroll into the Faculty of Biology and then join the Berlin Museum with the prospect of bird collecting trips to the tropics, on the condition that he completed his doctoral studies in 16 months. 
Meyer completed his doctorate in ornithology at the University of Berlin under Dr. Karl Zimmer, who was a full professor on 24 June 1926 at the age of 21. On 1 July he accepted the position offered to him at the museum for a monthly salary of 330.54 Reichsmark. At the International Zoological Congress at Budapest in 1927, Meyer was introduced by Striesmann to banker and naturalist Walter Rothschild, who asked him to undertake an expedition to New Guinea on behalf of himself and the American Museum of Natural History in New York. In New Guinea, Meyer collected several thousand bird skins he named 26 new bird species during his lifetime and, in the process also named 38 new orchid species. During his stay in New Guinea, he was invited to accompany the Whitney South Seas expedition to the Solomon Islands. Also, while in New Guinea, he visited the Lutheran missionaries Otto Tila and Christian Kaiser, in the Finchhofen district, there, while in conversation with his hosts, he uncovered the discrepancies in Hermann Detzner's popular book Four Years Among the Cannibals in German Guinea from 1914 to the Truce, in which Detzner claimed to have seen the interior, discovered several species of flora and fauna, while remaining only steps ahead of the Australian patrols sent to capture him. He returned to Germany in 1930, and in 1931 he accepted a curatorial position at the American Museum of Natural History, where he played the important role of brokering and acquiring the Walter Rothschild collection of bird skins, which was being sold in order to pay off a blackmailer. During his time at the museum he produced numerous publications on bird taxonomy, and in 1942 his first book Systematics and the Origin of Species, which completed the evolutionary synthesis started by Darwin. After Meyer was appointed at the American Museum of Natural History, he influenced American ornithological research by mentoring young birdwatchers. Meyer was surprised at the differences between American and German birding societies. He noted that the German society was "...far more scientific, far more interested in life histories and breeding bird species, as well as in reports on recent literature." Meyer organized a monthly seminar under the auspices of the Linnean Society of New York. Under the influence of J.A. Allen, Frank Chapman, and Jonathan Dwight, the society concentrated on taxonomy and later became a clearing house for bird banding and site records. Meyer encouraged his Linnean Society seminar participants to take up a specific research project of their own. Under Meyer's influence, one of them, Joseph Hickey, went on to write A Guide to Birdwatching. 1943. Hickey remembered later, Meyer was our age and invited on all our field trips. The heckling of this German foreigner was tremendous, but he gave tit for tat, and any modern picture of Dr. E. Meyer as a very formal person does not square with my memory of the 1930s. He held his own. A group of eight young birdwatchers from the Bronx later became the Bronx County Bird Club, led by Ludlow Griscom. Everyone should have a problem was the way one Bronx County Bird Club member recalled Meyer's refrain, Meyer said of his own involvement with the local birdwatchers, "...in those early years in New York when I was a stranger in a big city, it was the companionship and later friendship which I was offered in the Linnean Society that was the most important thing in my life." Meyer also greatly influenced the American ornithologist Margaret Morse Nice. Meyer encouraged her to correspond with European ornithologists and helped her in her landmark study on song sparrows. Nice wrote to Joseph Grinnell in 1932, trying to get foreign literature reviewed in the Condor. Too many American ornithologists have despised the study of the living bird. The magazines and books that deal with the subject abound in careless statements, anthropomorphic interpretations, repetition of ancient errors, and sweeping conclusions from a pitiful array of facts. In Europe the study of the living bird is taken seriously. We could learn a great deal from their writing." Meyer ensured that Nice could publish her two-volume studies in the life history of the Song Sparrow. He found her a publisher, and her book was reviewed by Aldo Leopold, Joseph Grinnell, and Jean Delacour. Nice dedicated her book to "...my friend Ernst Meyer." Meyer joined the faculty of Harvard University in 1953, where he also served as director of the Museum of Comparative Zoology from 1961 to 1970. He retired in 1975 as emeritus professor of zoology, showered with honors. Following his retirement, he went on to publish more than 200 articles, in a variety of journals, more than some reputable scientists publish in their entire careers. Fourteen of his 25 books were published after he was 65. 
Even as a centenarian, he continued to write books. On his 100th birthday, he was interviewed by Scientific American magazine. Meyer died on 3 February 2005 in his retirement home in Bedford, Massachusetts after a short illness. His wife, Marguerite, died in 1990. He was survived by two daughters, five grandchildren and ten great-grandchildren. The awards that Meyer received include the National Medal of Science, the Balzan Prize, the Sartan Medal of the History of Science Society, the International Prize for Biology, the Loy and Alden Miller Research Award, and the Lewis Thomas Prize for Writing About Science. In 1939 he was elected a corresponding member of the Royal Australasian Ornithologists' Union. He was awarded the 1946 Leidy Award from the Academy of Natural Sciences of Philadelphia. He was awarded the Linnean Society of London's prestigious Darwin Wallace Medal in 1958 and the Linnaean Society of New York's inaugural Eisenman Medal in 1983. For his work, Animal Species and Evolution, he was awarded the Daniel Giraud Elliott Medal from the National Academy of Sciences in 1967. Meyer was elected a foreign member of the Royal Society in 1988. In 1995 he received the Benjamin Franklin Medal for Distinguished Achievement in the Sciences of the American Philosophical Society. Meyer never won a Nobel Prize, but he noted that there is no prize for evolutionary biology and that Darwin would not have received one, either, in fact, there is no Nobel Prize for biology. Meyer did win a 1999 Crawford Prize. It honors basic research in fields that do not qualify for Nobel Prizes and is administered by the same organization as the Nobel Prize. Meyer was co-author of six global reviews of bird species new to science listed below. Meyer said he was an atheist in regards to the idea of a personal God because there is nothing that supports it. Topic. Meyer's ideas As a traditionally trained biologist, Meyer was often highly critical of early mathematical approaches to evolution such as those of J.B.S. Haldane, famously calling such approaches beanbag genetics. In 1959, he maintained that factors such as reproductive isolation had to be taken into account. In a similar fashion, Meyer was also quite critical of molecular evolutionary studies such as those of Carl Woese. Current molecular studies in evolution and speciation indicate that although allopatric speciation is the norm, there are numerous cases of sympatric speciation in groups with greater mobility, such as birds. The precise mechanisms of sympatric speciation, however, are usually a form of microallopatry enabled by variations in niche occupancy among individuals within a population. In many of his writings, Meyer rejected reductionism in evolutionary biology, arguing that evolutionary pressures act on the whole organism, not on single genes, and that genes can have different effects depending on the other genes present. He advocated a study of the whole genome rather than of isolated genes only. After articulating the biological species concept in 1942, Meyer played a central role in the species problem debate over what was the best species concept. He staunchly defended the biological species concept against the many definitions of species that others proposed. Meyer was an outspoken defender of the scientific method, and one known to sharply critique science on the edge. As a notable example, in 1995, he criticized the search for extraterrestrial intelligence SETI as conducted by fellow Harvard professor Paul Horowitz as being a waste of university and student resources, for its inability to address and answer a scientific question. Over 60 eminent scientists led by Carl Sagan rebutted the criticism. Meyer rejected the idea of a gene centered view of evolution and starkly but politely criticized Richard Dawkins' ideas. The funny thing is if in England, you ask a man in the street who the greatest living Darwinian is, he will say Richard Dawkins. And indeed, Dawkins has done a marvelous job of popularizing Darwinism. But Dawkins' basic theory of the gene being the object of evolution is totally non-Darwinian. I would not call him the greatest Darwinian. Meyer insisted that the entire genome should be considered as the target of selection, rather than individual genes. The idea that a few people have about the gene being the target of selection is completely impractical, a gene is never visible to natural selection, and in the genotype, it is always in the context with other genes, and the interaction with those other genes make a particular gene either more favorable or less favorable. 
In fact, Dobzhansky, for instance, worked quite a bit on so-called lethal chromosomes which are highly successful in one combination, and lethal in another. Therefore people like Dawkins in England who still think the gene is the target of selection are evidently wrong. In the 30s and 40s, it was widely accepted that genes were the target of selection, because that was the only way they could be made accessible to mathematics, but now we know that it is really the whole genotype of the individual, not the gene. Except for that slight revision, the basic Darwinian theory hasn't changed in the last 50 years. Topic currently recognized taxa named in honor of Ernst Meyer Bismarck Black Mysomela, Mysomela semelina Ernst Mary Mies, 1929 a subspecies of bird, a honeyeater, family Melifagidae, confined to several small islands to the west of the Admiralty Islands, in western Oceania, northeast of New Guinea. Ernst Meyer's water rat, Leptomys Ernst Mary Rumler, 1932 a species of rodent, of the family Muridae, from the Foja Mountains of Papua Province, Indonesia, and Central Cordillera, Adelbert Range, and Huan Peninsula of Papua New Guinea, a roundworm, Poikololimus Ernst Mary Sudhouse and Coke, 2004 a new species of nematode, family Rhabditidae, associated with termites of the genus Reticulitermes, on Corsica. New Ireland Rail, Hypotonidia Ernst Mary Kirkman and Stedman, 2006 a relatively large, probably flightless, extinct rail, family Rallidae, known from subfossil remains found on prehistoric archaeological sites, in caves on New Ireland, in the Bismarck Archipelago, western Oceania. Although described in the genus Galleralis, this species is now placed in Hypotonidia, Star Mountain's worm-eating snake, Toxicocalamus Ernst Mary O'Shea, Parker and Kaiser, 2015 a 1.2 meters, rare and secretive, venomous snake from the family Elapidae, believed to feed exclusively of earthworms, particularly the giant earthworms of the Megasculicidae. The etymology reads, the species name Ernst Mary is a patronym honoring the German-American ornithologist, systematist, and evolutionary thinker Ernst Meyer 1904 there are several connections linking Ernst Meyer to this new species of Toxicocalamus, which make him, and this snake, the ideal candidates for a patronym. First, Meyer himself visited New Guinea, and during the late 1920s he spent over two years conducting fieldwork in an area now part of PNG, as a member of a joint Rothschild AMNH expedition focusing on birds of paradise Avs, Passeriformes, Paradisidae, during which he collected many new bird and orchid species. Second, the holotype of T. Ernst Mary has been housed in the MCZ collection, mislabeled as Micropecius Ikahika, after having arrived and been accessioned in June 1975, the month and year that Meyer retired. Third, the true identity of this specimen was recognized by one of us MOS during a visit to the MCZ in May 2014, undertaken with the financial support of an Ernst Meyer travel grant from Harvard University, awarded to enable examination of the Toxicocalamus holdings at the MCZ and the AMNH, the two U.S. institutions where Meyer worked. Finally, 2015, the publication year of this description, marks the decennial of Meyer's passing at age 100, and naming a New Guinea snake after him seems a suitable tribute, an assassin bug, Bagauda Ernst Mary Kulkarni and Gaite, 2016 a species of cavernicolous, thread-legged assassin bug, known only from Sitara, in the western ghats of Maharashtra state, India. Topic Meyer's summary of Darwin's theory Darwin's theory of evolution is based on key facts and the inferences drawn from them, which Meyer summarized as follows, every species is fertile enough that if all offspring survived to reproduce, the population would grow fact. Despite periodic fluctuations, populations remain roughly the same size fact. Resources such as food are limited and are relatively stable over time fact. A struggle for survival ensues inference. Individuals in a population vary significantly from one another fact. Much of this variation is heritable fact. Individuals less suited to the environment are less likely to survive and less likely to reproduce. Individuals more suited to the environment are more likely to survive and more likely to reproduce and leave their heritable traits to future generations, which produces the process of natural selection fact. This slowly effected process results in populations changing to adapt to their environments, and ultimately, these variations accumulate over time to form new species inference. .In relation to the publication of Darwin's Origins of Species, Erst Meyer identified philosophical implications of evolution, an evolving world, not a static one. The implausibility of creationism. The refutation that the universe has purpose. Defeating the justifications for a human-centric world. Materialistic processes explain the impression of design. 
Population thinking replaces essentialism. Topic bibliography Topic Books Meyer, Ernst 1942. Systematics and the Origin of Species, from the Viewpoint of a Zoologist. Cambridge, Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-86250-0. Meyer, Ernst 1945. Birds of the Southwest Pacific, A Field Guide to the Birds of the Area Between Samoa, New Caledonia, and Micronesia. New York, Macmillan. Meyer, Ernst 1963. Animal Species and Evolution. Cambridge, Belknap Press of Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-03750-2. Meyer, Ernst 1970. Populations, Species, and Evolution. Cambridge, Belknap Press of Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-69013-4. Meyer, Ernst 1976. Evolution and the Diversity of Life. Cambridge, Belknap Press of Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-27105-0. Meyer, Ernst, and William B. Provini, eds. 1980. The Evolutionary Synthesis, Perspectives on the Unification of Biology, ISBN 0-674-27225-0 Meyer, Ernst 1982. The Growth of Biological Thought. Cambridge, Mass., Belknap P. of Harvard UP. ISBN 978-0-674-36446-2. Meyer, Ernst 1988. Toward a New Philosophy of Biology. Cambridge, Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-89666-6. Meyer, Ernst 1991. Principles of Systematic Zoology. New York, McGraw-Hill. ISBN 978-0-07-041144-9. Meyer, Ernst 1991. One Long Argument. Cambridge, Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-63906-5. Meyer, Ernst 1997. This is Biology. Cambridge, Belknap Press of Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-88469-4. Meyer, Ernst 2001. The Birds of Northern Melanesia. Oxford Oxfordshire, Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-514170-2. Meyer, Ernst 2001. What Evolution Is. New York, Basic Books. ISBN 978-0-465-04426-9. Meyer, Ernst 2004. What Makes Biology Unique. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-84114-6. Global Reviews of Species New to Science Zimmer, J.T., Meyer, E. 1943. New Species of Birds Described from 1938 to 1941. The Ock. 62, 249 262. doi 10.2307 4079651. JSTOR 4079651. Meyer, E. 1957. New Species of Birds Described from 1941 to 1955. Journal of Ornithology, 98 2208. Doi 10.1007 BF0167716. Meyer, E. 1971. New species of birds described from 1956 to 1965. Journal of Ornithology. 112 3, 302-316. Doi 10.1007 BF0164068-9. Meyer, E., Voulmier, F. 1983. New Species of Birds Described from 1966 to 1975. Journal of Ornithology, 124, 3, 217. doi 10.1007, BF0164060-7. Voulmier, F. Meyer, E. 1987. New Species of Birds Described from 1976 to 1980. Journal für Ornithologie, 128 137. 
doi 10.1007 bf0166169191 Voulmier, François, Lecroy, Mary, Meyer, Ernst 1992. New Species of Birds Described from 1981 to 1990. Bulletin of the British Ornithologists Club, 112A, 26. Topic. Other notable publications. 1923. Die Kolbenente Nairaka Rufina auf dem Deutsch Zuge in Sachsen. Ornithologisch Monatsbericht 31 to 135 minus 136. 1923. Derswerg Fliegenschnapper bei Greifswald. Ornithologisch Monatsbericht 31 to 136. 1926. Die Ausbreitung des Gerlitz Sirenus Canaria Sirenus L. Ein Beitrag zur Tiergeographie. J. Fur Ornithology 74 to 571 minus 671. 1927. Die Schneefinken Gattungen Montefringilla und Leucostik T. J. Fur Ornithology 75 to 596 minus 619. 1929 with W. Mies. Zeitschriftenverzeichnis des Museums für Naturkunde Mitteilungen aus dem Zoologischen Museum in Berlin 14 to 1 187. 1930 by Ernst Hardert. List of birds collected by Ernst Meyer. Ornithologisch Monatsbericht 36 to 27 minus 128. 1930. My Dutch New Guinea Expedition. 1928. Ornithologisch Monatsbericht 36 to 20 minus 26. 1931 Die Vogel des Saruwaged und Herzogeberges No Nugenia. Mitteilungen aus dem Zoologischen Museum in Berlin 17 to 639 minus 723. 1931 Birds collected during the Whitney South Sea expedition. Twelve notes on Halcyon Chloris and some of its subspecies. American Museum Novitates No. 469 1932. A Tenderfoot Explorer in New Guinea. Natural History 32-83-97 1935. Bernard Altam and the Territory Theory. Proceedings of the Linnaean Society of New York 45, 46-24-38 1938 Birds of the Crane Pacific Expedition, Ernst Meyer and Sidney Cameras, Zoological Series of the Field Museum of Natural History, Vol. 20, No. 34. 1940. Speciation Phenomena in Birds. American Naturalist 74-249-278 1941. Borders and Subdivision of the Polynesian Region as Based on Our Knowledge of the Distribution of Birds. Proceedings of the 6th Pacific Scientific Congress 4-191-195 1941. The Origin and History of the Bird Fauna of Polynesia. Proceedings of the 6th Pacific Scientific Congress 4-197-216 1943. A Journey to the Solomons. Natural History 52-30-37, 48 1944. Wallace's line in the light of recent zoogeographic studies. Quarterly Review of Biology 19 to 1-14. 1944. The Birds of Timor and Sumba. Bulletin of the American Museum of Natural History 83 to 123-194. 1944. Timor and the colonization of Australia by birds. EMU 44 to 113 minus 130. 1946. History of the North American bird fauna. Wilson Bulletin 58 to 3 minus 41. 1946. The Naturalist in Lighty's Time and Today. Proceedings of the Academy of Natural Sciences of Philadelphia 98 to 271 minus 276. 1947. Ecological factors in speciation. Evolution 1 to 263 minus 288. 1948. The new Sanford Hall. Natural history 57 to 248 minus 254. 1950. The role of the antennae in the mating behavior of female Drosophila. 
Evolution 4 to 149-154 1951 Introduction and Conclusion Pages 85255-258 in the problem of land connections across the South Atlantic with special reference to the Mesozoic Bulletin of the American Museum of Natural History 99 to 79-258 1951 with Dean Amadon A Classification of Recent Birds American Museum Novitates No. 1496 1953 with E. G. Lindsley and R. L. Usinger. Methods and Principles of Systematica Zoology. McGraw-Hill, New York. 1954. Changes in Genetic Environment and Evolution. Pages 157-180 in Evolution as a Process J. Huxley, A. C. Hardy and E. B. Ford eds Allen and Onwin. London. 1955. Carl Jordan's Contribution to Current Concepts in Systematics and Evolution. Transactions of the Royal Entomological Society of London 107-45-66 1956 with C. B. Rosen. Geographic Variation and Hybridization in Populations of Bahamas Snails Sarian. American Museum Novitates No. 1806. 1957. Species Concepts and Definitions", pages 371–388 in The Species Problem e. Meyer ed. AAAS, Washington, D.C. 1959. The Emergence of Evolutionary Novelties", pages 349–380 in The Evolution of Life, Evolution After Darwin, Vol. 1 s. Tax, ed. University of Chicago. 1959. Darwin and the Evolutionary Theory in Biology", pages 1–10 in Evolution and Anthropology, A Centennial Appraisal B. J. Meggers, ed. The Anthropological Society of Washington, Washington, D.C. 1959. Agassiz, Darwin, and Evolution. Harvard Library Bulletin, 13–165–194 1961. Cause and effect in biology, kinds of causes, predictability, and teleology are viewed by a practicing biologist. Science 134 to 1501 minus 1506. 1962. Accident or design: the paradox of evolution. Pages 1 to 14 in the evolution of living organisms. G. W. Leeper, ed. Melbourne University Press. 1964 Introduction, Bibliography and Subject Pages VXXVIII, 491-513 in On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life, by Charles Darwin. A facsimile of the first edition. Harvard University Press. 1965 Comments. In Proceedings of the Boston Collegium for the Philosophy of Science, 1962-1964. Boston Studies in the Philosophy of Science 2-151-156 1969 Discussion, Footnotes on the Philosophy of Biology. Philosophy of Science 36-197-202 1972 Continental Drift and the History of the Australian Bird Fauna. EMU 72-26-28 1972 Geography and Ecology as Faunal Determinants. Pages 549-561 in Proceedings 15th International Ornithological Congress K. H. Vuis, ed. E. J. Brill, Leiden, The Netherlands 1972 Lamarck Revisited. Journal of the History of Biology. 555-94 1974 Teleological and Teleonomic, A New Analysis. Boston Studies in the Philosophy of Science 14-91-117 1978 Tenure, A Sacred Cow? Science 199-1293 1980 How I Became a Darwinian, pages 413-423 in the Evolutionary Synthesis E. Meyer and W. Provini, eds. Harvard University Press, Cambridge, Massachusetts. 1980 with W. B. Provini, eds. The Evolutionary Synthesis. Harvard University Press. 1981 Evolutionary Biology.
pages 147 to 162 in the Joys of Research W Shripshire Jr ed Smithsonian Institution Press 1984 Evolution and Ethics pages 35 to 46 in Darwin Mars and Freud Their Influence on Moral Theory AL Kaplan and B Jennings EDs Plenum Press New York 1985 Darwin's Five Theories of Evolution in D. Cohn, ed., The Darwinian Heritage, Princeton N.J., Princeton University Press, pp. 755-772 1985. How Biology Differs from the Physical Sciences. In D. J. Depew and B. H. Weber, eds., Evolution at a Crossroads, The New Biology and the New Philosophy of Science, Cambridge, Massachusetts, The MIT Press, pp. 43-63 1988. The Why and How of Species. Biology and Philosophy 3-431-441 1992. The Idea of Teleology. Journal of the History of Ideas 53-117-135 1994, with W. J. Bach. Provisional Classifications v. Standard Avian Sequences, Heuristics and Communication in Ornithology. IBIS 136 to 12 18. 1996. What is a species and what is not? Philosophy of Science 63, June 262 to 277. 1996. The Autonomy of Biology: The Position of Biology Among the Sciences. Quarterly Review of Biology 71 to 97 minus 106. 1997. The Objects of Selection Proc. Natal, ACAD, Psi. USA 94, March, 2091-94. 1999. Darwin's Influence on Modern Thought Crawford Prize Lecture, September 23, 1999. 2000. Biology in the 21st Century Bioscience 50, October 2000, 895-897. 2001. The Philosophical Foundations of Darwinism. PDF, Proceedings of the American Philosophical Society, 145-488-495, archived from the original PDF on 14 April 2008 2002, with Walter J. Bach. Classifications and Other Ordering Systems. Zeitschrift Zuhl. Sist. Evolut Forsch. 42-1-25, Topic. See also American philosophy Biosemiotics Evolution List of American philosophers List of centenarians scientists and mathematicians Species problem Philosophy of biology Proximate and ultimate causation Topic. References Topic. Works cited Haffer, Jürgen Ornithology, Evolution, and Philosophy, The Life and Science of Ernst Meyer, 1904–2005. Berlin, Springer. ISBN 978-3-540-71778-2. Meyer, Ernst The Evolutionary Synthesis. Cambridge, Harvard University Press. ISBN 978-0-674-27226-2. Reprint of 1980 edition Meyer and William B. Provini, eds. with new preface. Topic further reading Coyne, J. A. 2005. Evolution, Ernst Meyer, 1904-2005. Science. 307, 5713, 1212-1213. Doi 10.1126 science.1110718 PMID 15731434 Diamond J 2005 Obituary Ernst Meyer 1904 to 2005 Nature 433 7027 700 to 701 Bibcode 2005natur.433 700d doi, 10.1038, Nature 03435. PMID 
Gill, F. B. 1994. Ernst Meyer, The Ornithologist. Evolution. 48 1, 12-18. doi, 10.2307, 2409998. JSTOR 2409998. PMID 28,000,000. Doi 1990. The Encyclopedia of Evolution. New York, Facts on File. ISBN 978-0-8160-1472-9. Schilthuizen, Menno Frogs, Flies, and Dandelions. Oxford Oxfordshire, Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-850393-4. Kitskara, U. 2006. Dogma, Not Faith, is the Barrier to Scientific Enquiry. Nature. 443 7107 26. 10.1038-443026b. PMID 16957709. Meyer, Ernst. 1954. Change of Genetic Environment and Evolution. In Julian Huxley. Evolution as a Process. London, George Allen and Onwin. OCLC 974739. Topic external links Ernst Meyer telling his life story at Web of Stories 80 years of watching the evolutionary scenery by Ernst Meyer, science. Meyer on Eldridge and Gold's punctuated equilibria. Ernst Meyer obituary in the Times Ernst Meyer obituary in the Economist Ernst Meyer and the evolutionary synthesis a review of Meyer's one long argument at the Wayback Machine archived July 25, 2011 interview.